I've had this thing sitting around my room for a long time and I didn't know if I was gonna like it, but in today's video you'll see this thing is a huge time saver. Hey friends, welcome back. It's Simon Hurley from Inclipse and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use this Denzel Pal, some stickles, some kind of paste, whatever you have in your stash to create some really awesome and smooth backgrounds. Now everything I used in today's video is all linked down below, so if you wanna find anything, I'll have links down there. And if you wanna use something from my line, you can use code SIMON20 at Ranger Inc for 20 off. So without further ado, let's get on into the video. All right, so let's get right into this. I'm going to start out by taping down my sheet of cardstock onto my Tim Holtz little media mat here. And then one trick that I learned when doing backgrounds is it's really cool to add another little um, rectangle or oval on top of it with just some removable adhesive. And I'll show you why in just a little bit later after we're done creating the background. So here I'm taping down just a little dotted stencil. I wanted something pretty simple for this background, and this is just a fun little Dino Wakely stencil. And now here I'm going to go in with some of my inks, and I'm going to do some ink blending. You guys have seen me do this in tons of videos. So I'm starting off with some of my colors. Here is Bee Sting, and I'm doing it in three different places on the card, so it kind of carries throughout. And then I'm going to go in with Clear Skies and just blend this. And when I go next to other colors, it'll create new colors. So here it created some purple in between these two. Um, and then here I'm going in with Slippery and Wet. <laughs> this is probably not a big surprise. This is one of my favorite color combos. I always recommend to maybe try out these three colors in any ink line because they'll create some really awesome new colors in between. So those create a green together. And then I also included a little bit of Overzealous, which is a super bright green. And it's really nice and bold. Now here I'm going in with the Stencil Pal, and this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. Now I was given this a long time ago, but I just tried it out in today's video, and I absolutely loved it. So these kind of like plasticky um, and kind of bendable tools, but they have a flat edge and a curved side, and these are really great at applying different mediums down. And I found that out in today's video after testing them. I always thought that it was kind of an extra step that I didn't need, however, Sometimes it's really hard to get the texture paste all smooth on your card, and this takes out any guesswork. So I'm using some stickles to do this. Now I realized afterwards this probably isn't the best thing to show because stickles aren't super easy to apply. The thing about them is when you're spreading them onto the surface, sometimes they kind of seep into the cardstock and don't spread super evenly, and you'll kind of see it here. It's mainly just a lot of glitter inside of these, but I wanted to show how to use um, stickles on like stencils and things like that because sometimes I feel like you have them in your craft room and they're a big bottle and you don't always want to use them for drops. So they are a really cool thing to add over top of stencils. Um, it just took a couple extra layers and it didn't really represent the stencil pal super well, but it's not that, it's just applying the stickles well. Now another thing you could do instead of applying it to the stencil pal is just add it in the areas where you need to fill it in, and I found that that helped a lot when I was doing this. But you'll see, once I'm done, I absolutely loved this. It didn't take too long to spread it over top, it just took quite a bit of stickles, but hey, if you've got them sitting around, it creates such a stunning background in the end. And look, so I'll pull this stencil off, um, and then I'm going to lift it off the surface, and since these stickles are like mainly just glitter and a little bit of color to them, or this one has no color. So I added it over top of this to just give glitter over top of my inks, and then I'll peel off that inside version, and then you have a frame and a centerpiece, and look at how shimmery they are, like whoa. So those are really cool to apply through a stencil, and I really wanted to share that. Now the next card here that I'm creating, and by the way, I'll share how to finish everything off at the end of the video. So I'm using some pixie spray with this one because some of the other one seeped underneath the stencil, and I wanted to show you this is a great way, in case if you have mediums that are seeping underneath, to make sure that it stays down and does not go underneath the stencil. So here, all it does is just, it creates a thin layer of removable adhesive on the stencil, but it's not going to go anywhere when you're moving your project down. So this way, nothing seeps underneath. Here I'm using some more stickles, but I'll share another alternative that I love at the end of the video again. And here I'm going to show you kind of something cool about this. So instead of having to um, put different colors down and make sure that they're all in a line, you can create some really cool patterns along with the um, stencil pal as well. So here I'm applying my different colors of stickles down that I want to use in today's video. And also I'm using um, one of my Frostbite stencils. This was from one of my earlier releases, but it's super awesome as a snowflake. And I'm going to just take that and start from the corner or start from wherever you want on the card and kind of turn it around the card and you get a really cool radial design. And those colors kind of stay in those stripes, which I think is super cool. So you could do this 
straight across, or you could do it in kind of a radial design like I'm doing with this snowflake here. And then all I need to do is reapply the colors and I can get them in the exact same spot. So the thing that's really cool about this that I wanted to share is sometimes it takes a long time and, you know, you never really have the same pressure as you're using the palette knife to smooth it over. So there's like peaks and valleys and it never turns out super smooth. But with this tool, it really smooths it out in like one pass. So it doesn't take too much time. Um, most of this is in real time. I didn't really speed any of this up, um, which is really cool. So it was super quick to create these backgrounds, which I just loved. And then I'll peel that off again and you can see how perfectly straight those lines are because we use that pixie tape and look at that awesome shimmer too from those stickles. I just love it. So then for the next card that I'm doing, I'm going to do the same thing that I did in the first one. You could totally switch it up with different shapes, but I really only just cut them into rectangles. You could do that with your trimmer, but if you have circles or anything like that or hearts, that's really cool as well. And you can create, you know, two different cards from just one background, which is awesome. Um, so then I'm going to go in and tape this down with some purple tape, and we can start on our background. Now this time I'm using some metallic shells. This is also from DecoFoil or ThermoWeb, and the cool part about these is they're like a mousse. So this will be easier to spread on my stencil, and you'll see in just a second here. Um, but they come in a couple different colors, and what I love about these is they are super awesome and really metallic. You know, here they don't look super metallic, but once they go on your project, oh my gosh, they are awesome. And the cool part about these is they're not going to dry out. I've worked with some pastes that are a little bit chunkier and not super fun to smooth over a stencil um, that are kind of like this and they dry out too. But the cool part about these is they're like a mousse, which I just love. So I'm going to um, put them onto, well, you could either put them on your stencil pal or you can put them on your cardstock. I'm just going to start by putting them on my cardstock here. So I'm going to take a palette knife and kind of put it over top in little globs and then I will spread it down with my um, stencil pal. Now, one thing that I thought thought initially when I was saw this being used is, you know, why would I want to put it down with a palette knife and then spread it over top? But the cool part is it just takes one second to spread it down. All you need to do is just put it down in globs or you could even apply it to this thing. But the cool part is, look, it takes one pass and then you get a really awesome smooth effect, which is really hard to do with a little palette knife. And also this thing is pretty cheap as well, which is awesome. So it comes at a great price point and it's a great tool too. It is really a huge time saver, even though it is a second step you have to do. It makes a really cool smooth result and you don't get uneven or like too thick paste, which is awesome. So then I'll peel this off and I absolutely love how that looks once it's done. It's super shiny. And then I want to go in and just clean everything off thoroughly with a paper towel. And the cool part about this paste too, since it's in a jar like this, you can do this with most pastes, but I'm going to take any of the excess and put it right back in the jar. So it'll save any. And then I'm going to peel this off and that's kind of a two for one deal. And look at how shiny those are too. You'll see at the end, it is super shiny once it's done. So now to finish off some of these cards, I'm using my Caroling Squad stamp set. Again, I released this earlier in the year, but I love how versatile this one is. And I'm going to use this small little image that I haven't used yet in the set. It's this little wreath that I created, which I just love. And then also I'm going to use the big tree for my card as well. And all I'm going to do to color these in is just do it really quickly. I stamped these down onto some watercolor cardstock, and I'm just going to color them in using my inks. I created a palette with my inks, um, and I'm just going to use a little bit of water to paint them in. And you guys have seen this a ton of times, so I sped it up really quickly here. But all I did was take a little bit of water and take the inks on a surface like a craft sheet, and then I'm just going to start painting over top. And when I paint in things like just green or anything like that, you can add in some blues or some yellows to kind of brighten it up or create some different shades. And I love doing that for some extra added interest when I'm watercoloring. But what I like about watercoloring is it's super quick and simple. I might have done these images both in like five minutes, um, but it's really quick in case if you're not great at coloring, but you just want to add a simple layer of color down. This really does the trick. And then I just colored in that little wreath with a little red here, and that finishes off both of those images. I heat set them, and then, well, you don't need to heat set them, but that's just how I quickly dried them since I'm impatient. And then I'm going to cut those out and put them on my cards. For this one, I just took, you know, that um, centerpiece that we left out, and I added the tree there with my little Merry Christmas sentiment from that same stamp set, which I hand wrote. And then also, there's that little inner piece that you can use. And then here is that second card that we did with that awesome gold, you can see that. And and then the Merry Christmas and the wreath really finished it off nicely. And then there you go, you have the border piece as well to use, which I just love. 
All right, so I hope you guys really enjoyed that video. I think that stencil palette is a huge time saver for me, and it really makes the backgrounds nice and smooth, which is something that I struggled with in the past. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, and be sure to leave a comment down below. Let's chat down there, and let me know which card that I created today was your favorite. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to never miss another crafting video like this one from me, and I'll see you guys very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.